Hey everybody, this is Evan Abrams, and today as part of our ongoing October Effects series, we're going to talk about the fractal noise and turbulent noise in After Effects. These are two effects, you'll find them in the Generate folder of plugins that generate kind of cloudy stuff. Now, this is fractal noise over here, and as you can tell, it's noise based on fractal patterns. It's a wonderful Perline algorithm that is generating some random noise. Sweet. Over here is turbulent noise. Now you tell me what the difference is just by looking at them because I'm not seeing much of one. I guess, you know, on the base level this one is a little bit different in contrast level than the other one, but all in that's because they're both basically the exact same thing. Now some of the differences that you should be aware of are turbulent noise does not use as much render resources and it actually can produce a higher quality image than fractal noise. Uh, fractal noise, more resource intensive, and you can cycle it. So if you need a perfect loop, then uh, fractal noise is your guy. But usually when you want to use fractal noise, you mean to use turbulent noise. That's probably the big thing. Fractal noise is more of a legacy holdover that shouldn't really be around. I mean, I don't know why they can't just build in a loop function to this first thing. I mean, that wouldn't be too hard. I mean, you could just do it with a loop out in some capacity, just ping pong back and forth, that would be fine. The point is that this one loops, takes up more resources, this one does not loop, and can give you better results for less render time. But anyway, all of this is mostly theoretical unless you can actually do something with these. So I'm gonna just fire up After Effects and we'll actually do something and I'll cut the noise. Because <laughs> we're talking about types of noise and my talking is just annoying background noise that no one ever needs to or wants to hear. Okay, so we know the difference between these two and that's super great, but now we need to actually make something with them. And the general uses of these are as the basis for generating random patterns and natural patterns so that you can make things like clouds or transitions or whatever. Something that may involve liquid or vapor or something like that. So I'll take you through the most basic one, clouds. Let's make some clouds. So I'm going to create a new composition, whatever. Um, I'm going to make a new solid. I'm going to make it uh, the color that the sky might be. I don't really know because I haven't seen the sky in a long time. I tend to stay indoors mostly. Uh, generally because the outside world is, is scary and it's full of really gross people. So I'm going to go ahead and make something that looks like this. I think that's what the sky looks like. I'm going to apply a gradient ramp to it because I don't believe the sky is actually a uniform color. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't actually know. I would have to look at it. Uh, looking out my tiny window, it is gray and rainy, so whatever. So we're going to just go with something like this that will form the basis of our sky. whoop de woo Now, create a new solid, or I'll just grab a solid I already made before, because you don't need to clutter up your project, and we'll call this a cloud layer. We're going to make a layer of clouds, and we're going to do that by going turbulent, get the old turbulent noise out here. Hey, it looks like clouds already. It's like clouds on a gray day, I suppose. So let's just transform those. Let's scale them up a bit, just so it can be kind of like this. Cool. Uh, maybe 400 in scaling, and um, we'd like to increase the contrast a bit. That's cool. Let's increase the complexity. Just get a little bit more detail in there. Put that up to like a 10. Neat. So these kind of look like clouds, and we're going to set them from normal to screen. Cool. Interesting. Uh, I'd like to alter the evolution over time. Hold down Alt, click on that stopwatch, hit time times 100. So the clouds will subtly change over time, as I'm told real clouds will do. I'm also going to go with the turbulent offset here. And I'm gonna have it just go like from here, set a keyframe, move ahead, and then it'll be over here. So what's going on is they are moving from right to left. They're be moving a bit fast, mind you. So let me just drag that out to the end of the comp here, full 30 seconds to move across. All right, that's cool. I mean, that's kind of like what clouds do, isn't it? 
I don't actually know. Anyway, so the scale here, 400, we're fine with that. You're fine with that. Sweet. Set the screen. Hit T. Bring up its uh, transparency, maybe. Something like this. Uh, maybe around 88, 90. I just know not 100%. Like 90 seems fine. Anyway, now you've got these clouds going by. I'm going to duplicate that just for fun. And um, hit U to bring up its properties here. And uh, I'm just going to change how far it goes. I don't want it to move as far. So it might go as far as there, and it might start as far as here. Just because I don't want it to be moving as much, and I'm going to change its evolution options to a random seed of 2 or whatever. So different random seed. I'm going to change its transform here, change its scale to 200 maybe. So it's smaller. And I'm going to bring its brightness down so it also represents fewer clouds. All right, sweet and good. Okay, so I've created two cloud layers. And you might be wondering, Evan, why did you create two cloud layers? What is your deal? Well, the thing of it is that turbulent noise is great. And I mean, not knocking it. But if you really want to make nature-like things, you have to remember that there's not just one layer of clouds, they don't exist just on one strata, and uh, you should have two operating with different air currents, so one moves in front of the other. Anyway, we just make clouds, so feel good about yourself, that is a comp named clouds, cool. Um, cloids, oh fuck me, clouds, there we go, good. So let's make a new comp and let's make something else. Clouds are cool, but, uh, you know, if that's not really dill in your pickle, how about we do something, maybe something a little bit more heavenly, ethereal? We can do that. We're going to create um, some kind of like a spotlight shining effect, like there's light coming in your eyes, and you can do whatever you want with this. But starting with the turbulent noise, hold down Alt, click on the evolution. We are going time times a uh, thousand on this one. Cool. So it is really changing out there, and the contrast is going to be 640, very contrasty. Complexity can stay as it is, because what we're going to be doing is we'll be using the CC radial fast blur out on this thing, and give it an amount of 100, duplicate it, so you got two of them out there, and uh, it's going to be creating this weird kind of spotlighty thing going on, and uh, you know, it's pretty rad. What I'd also like to do is to link the center of this into the center of the other one, just so they're always the same. So whenever I move the center of this one, the center of the other one is going to change as well, so we don't need any confusion. And then you can just put it wherever you want. I'm going to put it up here, just for now, just for fun, just because I can. Okay, that's good. So contrast level seems to be holding pretty well. Um, I want to increase the brightness, perhaps, or not. Uh, you might also want to think about something like a glow, applying a glow to this. That could be fun. Just create that nice glowiness in these areas. And we're just going to put the radius down to 5 and the intensity down to like 2. Don't need to be too intense because the next thing we're going to apply is the colorama. Where is that damn thing? Colorama. Here we go. Colorama, if you've never used it, is perhaps the perfect addition to anything that generates grayscale black and white images. Uh, the Colorama will then remap that input uh, from, in this case, the intensity, and it'll remap that to whatever your output cycle is. And if we do something like fire, it looks like this. <laughs> Boom. Pretty cool, right? So then it's just like, just like that. So that's pretty neat, it's fun, undulating. It's interesting. Maybe it's interesting. I don't even know. Maybe it's boring. I just, you know, I just thought it would impress you. Maybe I was wrong. But anyway, this is a thing you can also make, starting with turbulent noise. And uh, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of questions like, oh, I don't have a lot of banding in mine, you know? Why, why is there banding? Well, uh, it might have something to do with your project being 8 bits per channel, so uh, when you get the chance, uh, bump that up to something a little bit more professional grade there, bro, and uh, don't worry about it. So, 32 bits per channel. This is some 32 bits per channel shit we're working with, and it is the good stuff. Problem is, radial fast blurs don't operate in that. 
Neo this Colorama, but turbulent noise sure does, and uh, it's producing pretty worthwhile results here. So that is good. And you'll really enjoy the added uh, processing power that turbulent noise frees up for you when you're working in 32 bits per channel. Anyway, this has been two things that you can make with the turbulent noise. And I know there's infinitely other things. You know, we're not gonna end it right here. Hold on, I got one more thing. So I'm gonna do a transition for you. And I've talked about this in another tutorial about specifically transitions, but in this case, this is what we're doing. We're gonna make a transition. So I'm gonna make a new solid, it's blue. Let's say this fills in for our content. And uh, just so you know that this is the content, I'm gonna put uh, Venetian blinds. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, anyway, so this layer here will fill in for our content, and then uh, we create a uh, solid on top of that, and then I go ahead and I use the turbulent noise, doop doop, cool. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just keyframe the brightness, the contrast, and uh, maybe the evolution a little bit call those up and we know I want contrast to start at 640 or higher and I want the brightness to be low 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 like minus 250 low go ahead a bunch of keyframes and then the brightness is going to be a positive 250 so it's going to just white this thing out boom like that contrast is going to come down to zero as it goes so it's getting less contrasted filling up filling up filling up there we go, and we are out. So in fact, you can go through and you can find the spot where the overflow really just takes over right here. And then you can grab those keyframes, move those to the end, just so you're not spending keyframes on uh, useless time. And then likewise, at the beginning, you wanna find where things actually start happening, somewhere around there. Grab those, pull them to the beginning, sweet. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna go in here to transform. I'm gonna make this bigger, 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 bigger. And I'm gonna up the complexity again. 10, nice and big. Woo, kinda like this, good. Now the big kicker, I want the evolution to go a little bit. Maybe like this, so it is altering and changing as it's growing and coming on. And the big thing is that you wanna set it to something where the white brightness here is just going to be see-through so that can be things like uh, darken for example it's probably your best bet so that as it comes on fades out like that uh, other fun things you know i would say multiply but uh, not really and then uh, you got other things like color burn maybe but you really have to make sure that you really burn out that brightness get it gone and uh, such so darken is probably your best bet in the way that this comes on still looks pretty cool whoosh kind of like this but anyway that's one way to make a transition uh, another way you could do this if you don't want to screw around with this kind of thing just leave this on normal <clears throat> new solid make comp size make this thing black okay whoop de woo great put this below this and go uh, luma mat of that thing above and you're all good or i guess inverted luma mat luma inverted whoosh there you go pretty great just like that so this is how you can make a transition using these kinds of things and you're gonna have to tweak the keyframes for yourself because i don't really care to do that right now anyway the point is so many things that you can make with the turbulent noise and the fractal noise and just a noisy noise, a noise, an oyster. So I'm Evan Abrams. This has been a bit of a primer about the turbulent and fractal noise uh, because I do know that I use them in a lot of things. Well, I use turbulent noise in a lot of things. I don't use fractal noise very often, but in case you were wondering why are there two things that do exactly the same thing, have exactly the same settings, uh, now you know. Um, as for why they don't just give a cycle option to turbulent noise, beats the crap out of me. I'm sure if you write enough angry letters to Adobe, they'll do something about it. I think the real issue is that one came before the other, and they haven't gotten rid of it because a lot of old templates still use it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying October Effects, where we talk about different effects in the effects and presets. Uh, next month we'll do regular things and check out the rest of the tutorials on the channel. They're pretty good. I usually talk about motion graphics and After Effects, and sometimes I talk about whatever else is on my mind. 
Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter, at EC Abrams. Get involved on the Facebook, and uh, I'll see you around the internet.